Hey guys, this is Hell Hades free to play. Guys, I'm going to take you through basically the cheat code. Yeah, anyone can do this. Anyone can beat Nightmare Clan Boss in a really quick amount of time. And once you beat Nightmare Clan Boss, you're well on your way to unlocking our beautiful things. Yeah, it's the first milestone in the game that you should aim for because it just starts to give you shards books all of that glorious stuff to make this game easier and more enjoyable so i think anyone can do it i'm on day 41 i think i'm on day 41 on this free to play account and if you follow these steps i think you can 100 get this done now let me just share with you something here in fact i'm going to show you this little room in my discord it's called helpful reference info Come and join my Discord if you haven't already. It's always in my description of every video. But within this section, I wonder, would you like to see a video on me going over the most interesting things in this part of my Discord? Because there's actually gold in this Discord. There's so many good reference things. But I'm going to call out this one. This was built by Bobo back in the day. And it's, it's based around clan boss drop rates of items. Okay. There's another one in this part of the Discord for Hydra. There's another one for uh, knowing what sort of accuracy you need. There's, there's a whole load of really cool stuff in this part of the Discord. Uh, probably the most underrated part of my Discord. <laughs> so what goes on here? So if you see at the top, you've got the level of clan boss you're fighting. Goes across to the right. And then you've got the chest that you can earn and what you would get as a percentage chance to get it from that chest. Now from clan boss things start to get really interesting when you move up from brutal to nightmare if you see the best chest you can get from brutal you've got an 11 percent chance of a shard you've got a just under two percent chance of a steel tome under two percent um and then other than that you get very high chances of things like brews artifacts potions etc yeah when you get to nightmare max chest it moves from 11 percent chance of a shard to 30 percent it moves from under two percent chance of a steel tome to 16 percent so if you're in a clan that's beating up nightmare and killing it which means you get double chests and you're getting the final chest for nightmare this is when you start to unlock the glorious prizes and honestly when you then move to ultra nightmare it gets silly this is why unkillable teams are so good because 82 percent chance of a shard 27% chance of a book, etc. Yeah, so it just gets better and better the further up this you get. And on this, it actually kind of breaks down as well. You know, so for the shard count, if you get a shard, it's a 21% chance it's going to be ancient, 3% chance of void, and 6% chance of a sacred. So it kind of breaks it down. Interesting that for nightmare, you've got a better chance of a sacred than you have a void. I don't know if those are the wrong way around. But that's mad if that's true. If it's that way around, that's weird. Whereas on Ultra Nightmare, better, better chance of a void compared to a sacred. I'm interested if that's the right way around, actually. Now I've just read that back. Anyway, this is why we're doing it. So how do we get there? How do we get to Ultra Nightmare in this many days? There's a few steps to follow. The first one, and this is probably the most important one, is you need five champions that are six star and they need to have their tier six mastery. And you're probably like, hell Hades, that's impossible. That's, you know, you've only done that because you're a content creator. No one can do that. Lady H has done that. She's done that yesterday. And she's a brand new raid player who's just leveling champions and enjoying the game and, and gets sidetracked into missions and all that type of stuff. She's not hard content creator focused. She got her fifth level 60 yesterday with masteries. Yeah, so it's definitely doable. Don't tell me it's not. It is. That's the first thing. The other thing to be aware of, though, you do not need all the masteries to get tier six. Yeah, so you see here, my Ronda does not have tier five filled in. My Sepulchre doesn't have all tier five filled in. Stagnite doesn't have tier five filled in. This is important, right? Because that's an extra probably 500 energy to get those done. That's an extra probably day of mastery farming to get those done. So be direct. Get the most important stuff first. Then if you want to fill in the gaps, go back. But I bypassed a bunch of missions which were 
uh, which felt good, or events, I should say, which felt good to do this because I felt like it was more important to get my Nightmare Clan boss on the chart. So 60s with the final mastery done. That's the important part. And really, it needs to be War Master, or if you've got a multi-hitter, it needs to be Giant Slayer. That's where some of your damage comes from. It's also where some of your healing comes from. So the first thing is 60s with masteries. The second thing is a way of healing in your team. So I've got a combination of ways of healing. I've either got lifesteal gear or I've got guardian gear on every champion that I've built out for clan boss. I had to change builds to make sure that all of these five had a way to heal. Ideally, you, you either have a champion with leech or you have a, someone who's got like a passive heal or like continuous heals, or big shielding, which kind of acts as it heals, yeah? I would prefer not to have everyone in life still gear, but I have to heal them. So we've gone life still gear. As I say, I'd rather have somebody in the team that gives me leech. If I had Grush right now, Grush would come in, one of these would come out, okay? And actually, I just, this morning, six-starred Cornelia, and I might well take Elhane out once Cornelia gets her final mastery done. So that's like a, for the future. But 60s with Masteries, a way of healing for every champion. The third thing you need is somebody in the team with a reasonably consistent decrease attack ability. If they don't have a reasonably consistent decrease attack, you need two champions with some form of decrease attack ability. It's the most important one if you are not running an unkillable team. Okay, so that's the third thing. I actually think, other than that, honestly, these could be any champions. Yeah, as long as you cover those things off. These could be any champions in the game. Some are better than others, clearly. Some bring other stuff. Now, you do need to be able to do damage. Damage comes through War Master or Giant Slayer. It all co also comes through somebody who's got a decent poison ability. Or any legendary that you own, if you've got Brimstone on them and you put Accuracy in your build, then you will get damage and a lot of damage from Brimstone as well. Ronda's actually great for this. I know we all hate the changes to, to Brimstone yet, and I'm included in that. I've now had to build Ronda with accuracy, but it's really worth it because it's still by far the best way to do damage. Other blessings to call out, I guess. I've got Cruelty on Stag, even though he's a one-star blessing because he stacks um, his hits really quick. So he will give me an extra 5% decreased defense on the boss for cruelty. The more defense you drop, the harder your Warmaster hits hit for, etc. Yeah. The other champions here. So I've got Phantom Touch on my Kale, Phantom Touch on my Elhane. This is just extra damage for damage dealers. And in Sepulchre, I've actually taken Faultless Defense so that she takes less damage from Clan Boss hits. Yeah, from his multiple hits. So... Hopefully she stays alive longer. She's going to be tanking stuns and stuff like that. So I need her to stay alive as long as possible. Now, you're probably like, yeah, but you've got Sepulchre. She's so good for clan boss. She's probably the only clan boss champion in my squad. Kale, you could argue, is early game. But honestly, I have not been blessed with clan boss champions. And my champions are not fully booked. So this really is like the bare bones start into Nightmare, which you then build on. Okay, and I would say once you get to Nightmare... If you can speed tune a team, you will do better than if you don't speed tune a team. Ultra Nightmare, it's almost like a given you need to speed tune if you're going to get maximum chests. Nightmare, I'm going to get away with it, I think. But I would do better, higher levels of damage if it was speed tuned. And obviously, if my champions were booked. Yeah, and that's something which I'm going to work towards over time as I get my gear to a better place. Uh, you can go to Deadwood Jedi's website if you want to understand about speed tuning and you want to see good speed tunes in action literally come to this site here deadwoodjedi.com you've got this speed tune list and you can pull out different speed tunes if you're a novice i would say look at something like a, a one to one ratio which basically means when the clan boss takes a turn you take a turn or if you're trying to just kind of up it a little bit a four to three that means that one of your champions two three however many you're going to pick Go four times for every time the clan boss goes three times. means you rotate through your skills quicker. If you want to go to Ultra Nightmare, really you want to be punching for a two to one ratio. Which means you're going to hit twice for every time the clan boss hits.
But if you're speed tuned, you will do better than it if you are not. They're the main things you need to focus on. Yeah, if I did not have Sepulchre, I would be building out Coffin Smasher because he has got a good decrease attack ability. Yeah, you just need to cover the bases of damage, decrease attack, level 60 with masteries, ways of healing. Other than that, I think you can do it with kind of any champions. The first one who's going to be dumped from my team is Elhane because she literally just brings hits. She doesn't bring any useful debuffs. She doesn't bring anything for my team in terms of buffs. She's just in there for raw damage and it's not enough for clan boss. She will be dumped and someone who brings a bit more utility for my team will come in in her place. So let's watch a run in action here. Uh, I guess it's worth calling out some stats. Let's do that quick. So clan boss on nightmare runs at 170 speed. Yeah, and you need, well, ideally you're running somewhere between 171 and 17, uh, sorry, 189 speed if you're just trying to go uh, a little bit quicker than clan boss. That, that, that will basically mean that you have a one-to-one -one ratio with clan boss. So what I was looking for on my champions was around those type of speeds, enough accuracy to land ability. So I'm looking for about 170 accuracy for anyone who's got debuffs to land. Yeah, and then other than that, if there's someone who hits, I tried to build some crit and some attack and some crit damage. As I say, these are not optimal clan boss builds. These are bare bone clan boss builds. Yeah, these are like the entry level to Nightmare. Some speed, some accuracy, some crit on a Ronda, some damage, and then some health and defense. Someone like Sepulchre, who I just want to stay alive, way more tanky. Health, defense is a priority here, and accuracy and speed. Stagnite. Health, defense, speed is higher here because I use him for everything else. I can't break all of my other teams to do this. So he's faster at 215, but we've got enough accuracy to do stuff. Kale, I've built him a bit more tanky for clan boss here. So speed, accuracy, and then a bit of tanky. I want him to stay alive. I really would like more defense than this number. 1.6k defense is very low. I prefer for this. I probably could change something out but i just don't have the silver to be changing gear all over the place so kind of stays as he is for now i would like maybe i could switch these gloves potentially into defense percent gloves like these but it's a lot of silver costs if i don't get a massive amount of reward so i'm trying not to change builds too much el Hane, again her build is built to do damage not built to play clan boss she doesn't need accuracy because she doesn't have anything to land so we've got more attack, crit rate, and crit damage. But this is not a good clan boss build. As I say, she's next out, and I'll replace her with someone who's better. So you can see my builds are not crazy. In fact, I'd say they're below par for what I need. They're low. They're, they're weak for clan boss. But because I've covered the bases, I think I can still do this kind of like four key damage against Nightmare. And this is where I want to be. I did actually do a live build session on my stream last night. So if you want to go and check it out, you can. Um, basically, I, I built some of these champions out. I also just set up an AI if I want to do this on auto. So I've just turned off abilities, really, that don't make any sense. I always want Kale to apply poison when he can. So I've turned his A2 off. Uh, Ronda, I don't want to use her A3. And then I've just kind of prioritized the good skills. Now, it's worth saying here, we can go full auto, yeah, and let it run. And we will get a decent enough amount of damage. Yeah, I can let it all go. We're going to get abilities away. Uh, they're, they're going to do their abilities in tune with what I've asked them to do. Okay. But if you actually want to maximize your damage, then doing it on manual will be better. Yeah, I'm going to do this key on manual to just kind of show you. Um, but your things like if my sepulchre lands a decreased attack, and Stagnite's got his decrease attack backup ability ready, I can hold it. I can hold it until it's needed. Yeah, and then that way, I'm covering myself for the decrease attack ability more frequently. So they're the type of things that you can do if you're manual in the fight. I'm going to manual this one. You can watch it through with me. And I guess let's see what we get. How much damage do you think I'm going to do, by the way? A four key, I need to do nine and a half million damage per key. So that's kind of like my minimum run. Uh, but you've seen the build, you've seen the team. Comment down below how much you think we're actually going to do.
So here we go. 10.5 million damage against Nightmare Clan Boss. That's a very comfortable four key. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, actually. I'm just going to run one more run, but not manual anything. And you'll see the difference in damage between me taking the five minutes to get it done uh, optimally as, a, as I could versus just a straight run where I don't control anything. It's probably going to be, I reckon, something like a million difference in damage. It actually turned out pretty simple. Oh, in fact, basically the same number. So there you go. Maybe I don't need to do any manual in, uh, or maybe I got good RNG in this one. Who knows? But what I would say is, look at the damage split between my team here. Rhonda, 4.1 million. She's doing the brimstone. She's bringing a lot of additional hits with her giant slayer. She's a decent champion here. My poisoner, 3 million. Yeah, my... One of my debuffers who hits for decent damage, Stag, 1.2 million. Sepulchre, 700k, but she brings a lot to the team. In fact, my team wouldn't do this damage without her. El Hain is, you know, is the one that stands out to me that is just not pulling her weight. She doesn't bring any debuffs. She doesn't bring any buffs for the team. She's just in there for raw damage, and she's not anywhere near my other damage dealers. So once she's out, someone else is in. Maybe we can switch this up to about 13 million, which will give me a three key for Nightmare, which is ideally where I want to be. Gives me a spare key to throw somewhere else. Or if I can't be active enough to do four keys in a day, then obviously I'd move on and, um, and just miss a key out. But this is it. Nightmare has been unlocked on the free to play 40 days in. And I think anyone can do it. It's almost like a cheat code. You just need those things I spoke about earlier. 60s with Masteries. Ways of healing in your team, regular decrease attack abilities, and a way to do damage. Hey, guys, I've been Hell Hades, free to play. I'll see you later.